the two sides of parliament were thrown into spirited arguments for and against the motion filed by Member of Parliament for Tamale South, Harun Idrisu, asking the Speaker of Parliament to declare four seats vacant following the decision of the four MPs to contest the next elections as independent candidates. Now, referencing, referencing Article 97.1 of the Constitution, Harun Idrisu noted that the four MPs have made their intentions not to remain with their political parties on which they came to Parliament. Now, MPs from both sides took turns to articulate why they believe the Speaker should declare the seats vacant or otherwise. Now, let's listen to what some MPs have been saying on the matter. Order 93-1 of the standing orders of this House on a matter of public importance. The Speaker, it has come to our notice that the Honorable Peter Kwache Aka the current NDC member for Amenfi Central in the Western region has filed with the Electoral Commission to your, your party member, your party has no petition. Have you, as General Secretary, written any petition that you've sacked him? And then he's not here. Even if there's a, a letter from the General Secretary that Honorable Aka has been sacked from NDC, he has to be heard. A man must be heard. The rule is that if all men find a man's hand in a tail, his guilt must still be proven. You cannot just get up and say, Mr. Speaker, to make a declaration, declare somebody's seat vacant. And Mr. Speaker, the Harun Idrisu petition, if you look at it, it means that you are supposed to refer the petition to petitions committee. What they are doing, they just want a short circuit. And that is what Honorable Atufosin is trying to do. So Mr. Speaker, a statement is made. First of all, the statement has to be admitted. But because of the urgency of this matter, I don't think I'll even belabor that point. But the 93 it says that the clerk shall make available to members copies of the admitted statement. But because of the urgency of this matter and the seriousness of the matter, I will not also belabor that point. But Mr. Speaker, when you look at order, order 5, uh, 2, they say in the case in any case not provided by these orders, the Speaker shall decide on the procedural question. Mr. Speaker, as far as Order 93 is concerned, it is clear what will happen to a statement made under Order 93. And we have been in this house for a long time. When you decide to make a statement after people will comment, that's what they are doing. When we finish commenting, if the Speaker thinks that the comments are set as to raise a serious issue, you refer the matter to a committee. The committee will go investigate the matter. And therefore, you cannot pray in aid Article 2 of the Constitution. So why is the factual basis in law for, for, for the Speaker to do what you want him to do? Who would look at the, like the, 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 the facts? The Supreme Court. So if you, you, want, you want the Speaker to give a decision in a vacuum, and somebody, I heard somebody say, when the speaker is informed. The speaker is informed about what? What has happened? What is the information about? It is a pleasure of somebody. Therefore, there's no factual basis that people have crossed carpet and say that the, the speaker should just rubber stamp your so-called information. There should be an evidential basis for the speaker to take that decision. Under, under order 18, as is being urged upon you, what is the evidential support for the speaker to take that decision? On the mere say so of a, a political platform, uh, 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 to boy thinking, trying to appease those he was hearing, and they say, Oh, I'm going to use the speaker. Oh, my God, and King, deliver us. Deliver this. I'm leaving this chamber. This is a very hollow chamber. Meanwhile, Majority Leader Alexander Fenyomarkin has announced that he has filed an injunction application of the Supreme Court in response to the minority's attempt to declare the seat of independent candidates vacant. This development follows the announcement by former Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu that his side of the House plans to invoke Article 971G of the Constitution. I got uh, a memo which was addressed to Mr. Speaker by the respected member for Tamale South, 
uh, I got a copy, and uh, he has sent a notice of petition to Mr. Speaker to declare some seat vacant, and he has listed Agona West, Suhum, and Memphis Central, and Formina. So he relies on order 99 and also anchors his application on order 18, and uh, he intends to move the house to uh, consider this uh, matter. But uh, before then, I think um, I have also uh, looked at the matter, the constitutional provision, and I hold the view that the members of my caucus who have filed to go independent for the next election have not written to me as the head of the caucus to say that they are no more part of the caucus. So as far as I'm concerned, the caucus remains intact. And I believe that some of these controversies are better settled by the courts. So in my capacity as the majority leader, I have filed a writ at the Supreme Court. Parliament has been duly served. Well, we've just been informed right now that the Speaker is making a very important statement in the House of Parliament. So we're going to take you live there right now to the Parliament House where Speaker Bagbin is currently on the floor. Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagbin, but Speaker of Parliament. That office, not me in person. So he's taking that to the Supreme Court. I also listened to the comments on the proper vein. Those of you who commented talking about the High Court and the determination of these matters. They are disagreeing with his procedure of going to the Supreme Court, but the reliefs are quite different from what he said, what he told me, because I have not been served with the process yet. And so that is still not before me. So please kindly give me these two days, and I'll come here with a well-written ruling. I will submit it to all of you so that at the end of the day, justice would have not only been done, but would have been seen to be manifestly done in this matter. Yes, please. Speaker, uh, very humbly, I think that it will be fair that I haven't made reference to the suit in my submission, and same having been referred to uh, in your comment uh, soon thereafter. Uh, as has been the practice of this house, it is appropriate that same is made available to the to the table of it. So, Mr. Speaker, with your leave, with your leave, it's a document that, Mr. 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 Speaker, majority, majority leader, Mr. Speaker, majority, may I finish, Mr. Speaker, majority leader, Mr. Speaker, may I finish, may I now, Mr. Speaker, please, Mr. Speaker, these are the gentlemen who are seeking please, justice, please, and are obstructing justice. These are the gentlemen who some minutes ago were talking about justice. See them, see the lawyers among them. Mr. Speaker, I need to make my point, and I will make my point. I will need to make my point, and I will make my point. Mr. Speaker, this practice that when we are up on our feet, they will get up to obstruct must end. This must end. Mr. Speaker, what I am saying is that I refer to my suit in my submission. In your comments, you referred to the very suit that I filed at the Supreme Court. I am saying that as a house, the practice has always been that when you refer to a document, you make the document available to 
to, 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 to the house. Mr. Speaker, I am therefore, I am therefore seeking your leave to enable me make the document available through the table office so that it becomes part of the answer. Mr. Speaker, when I, soon after my submission, Hansa department sent a lady. They came here with this, that they want this suit, and then the petition I read. They referred to the Aaron Idris' petition. This is the notice they brought. It's here. Mr. Speaker, the notice of your petition. We will return to Parliament when the minority leader makes a statement. But earlier, the Speaker of Parliament urged MPs to strike a balance between their legislative duties and the pressures of their election campaigns. In his formal address, he emphasized the importance of staying dedicated to the House, especially as they tackle urgent decisions in the weeks ahead. There's more in this report. The fifth meeting of the fourth session of Parliament commenced at the Dome of the Accra International Conference Centre with Speaker Alban Bagwin emphasising the critical nature of decisions to be made in the sitting. He urged MPs to remain steadfast in their duties of stressing the need for high levels of seriousness. The legislative agenda ahead is weighty and we must approach it with the seriousness it demands. The Speaker went on to highlight key bills that will be considered during this sitting and he charged MPs to ensure that sensitive legislation is given priority. The Environmental Protection Bill, Parliamentary Service Bill and the Parliamentary Transition Bill. We must ensure that bills of time-sensitive nature are scheduled for debate and decisions as soon as possible. With election season on the horizon, the Speaker urged them to balance the demands of their campaigns with legislative responsibilities. It is understandable that the demands of campaigning will pull at your time and energy. However, it is critical that we balance these demands with our legislative responsibilities. He advised them to act with decorum to preserve the gains of democracy. Our actions, our ways, and our conduct will be seen and heard by our constituents. We must, therefore, be mindful. Well, in their opening remarks, leaders of both the majority and the minority caucuses talked tough on Galamsey, with Otto forcing blaming the dire situation and a lack of leadership and possible complicity of government, a position opposed to by the majority leader, Alexander Thingomarking. At the heart of this crisis is leadership failure, official complicit and lack of political will by the Kufuado Baumia government and the MPP. We cannot, as a political class, blame game on Bogalamse and say that a particular political party, in this case, the Kufuado administration has failed in its fight against Galamse and leave out what happened preceding the administration of Akufo Adukala, uh, administration. The minority leader also warned against the reckless spending in the lead up to the 2024 elections. Government must guard against the temptation of spending, and it does not have to be only this election. Such reckless fiscal indiscipline is what has landed our dear country into debt hole. For his part, majority leader Alexander Pinho Marking urged sector ministers to be present in parliament to respond to questions from MPs, highlighting the limited time available to address critical issues. Due to the limited time within which this business may be conducted, I would humbly urge all sector ministers again to kindly schedule their programs effectively so that they can make time to appear before this House to respond to questions filed by honourable members. As Parliament resumes, both the majority and the minority leaders have made it clear that the coming weeks will require decisive action, especially on issues like LMC, Amongst others, Noble Crosby and Accra International Conference Center.